Shadow Treasurer Angus Taylor and started by asking him whether the coalition genuinely is on the side of big business. Well, Ross, we're, we're in favour of any business that does the right things by its customers, serves its customers well, serves Australians well, creates jobs and in, invests, takes risks. That's what business should do. And of course, the vast majority of businesses right across Australia, small and large, do exactly that. Uh, and we're always going to support business to do that. Look, we're the, the party that believes that the private sector drives the economy, drives job creation. It's not the, it's not the public sector. It's not government. Uh, it is the private sector. Um, it is true uh, that, that we've seen some big businesses not focus as much on their customers uh, as, as perhaps they should have in the past uh, and have done in the past, but uh, the vast majority do, and, and we're always going to be supportive of that. We are the believers in private investment and the power of that uh, for creating wealth and opportunity for all Australians. Do you think you get as much credit back from the business community as you should as a coalition, given the fact that it used to be unions would support Labor and the business would, co would back the coalition? Th those line, lines on the business side at least seem to be blurred. Well, look, there's no doubt, Ross, that in recent times we've seen a number of big businesses take strong political positions. Uh, and sometimes on issues that are not really directly related to their own business. And uh, of course, that is going to attract some criticism when we disagree with those positions and people have got to expect that. I mean, if business wants to stray outside of its knitting, if it's not going to stick to the knitting, then it's in the political fray and, and there'll be debate about those issues. And that's appropriate. There were many businesses took strong positions on The Voice, which are at odds with our position, for instance. Um, and we, uh, we made clear our views on that. And I think that's to be expected. But I, I think the role of business, I've worked in business, uh, unlike most on the other side of politics, all of my career before uh, coming into, uh, into politics, uh, and, and the role of business is to serve its customers well, create opportunities for all. And when business does that, uh, it, it is doing a great thing. It's a noble thing, an important thing, and it's good for Australia. Well, what business wants right now is better economic conditions. Inflation this week uh, for April came in higher than anticipated, which, of course, puts pressure on the Reserve Bank, if not the raise rates, but then to keep them higher for longer. Uh, the big question here is whether government right now, with its spending, is acting contrary to the interests of where the Reserve Bank wants our economy to be. Well, that's exactly right. I think that's exactly what is happening, Ross. And we're seeing uh, inflation accelerating here in Australia. It's going up, not down. Uh, we are the, the only one of our peer countries that's seen accelerating inflation since December. And that's a real concern. We're also seeing the bond market sending a very strong message that they don't expect any interest rate cuts in the next 12 months. Indeed, if anything, they see the potential for an increase. Um, and that's a huge concern. Now, when you've got the government with its foot on the accelerator as the Reserve Bank is trying to foot, put the foot on the brake, uh, you wreck the engine. And that is exactly what we're seeing right now with upward pressure on inflation and yet a GDP per person recession. Uh, we've now had four quarters where the economy on a per person basis has not been going forward. In fact, three quarters going backwards. I mean, this is truly a disastrous situation. We needed a budget that made life easier, made the work of the Reserve Bank easier than it otherwise would have been, but we got a budget that's made it harder for the Reserve Bank, and that's why the expectation now is that interest rates are going to be higher for longer. So the government has taken in over the past couple of years tens of billions of dollars in extra taxes from bracket creepers. Wages have risen, pushing people up into higher tax brackets. Some, such as the former head of economics at the Reserve Bank, Lucy Ellis, now at Westpac, says that those tax brackets should be indexed so that people's taxes effectively stay in line uh, with where inflation is going. What's your own view on that? Well, the first point I'd make about this is she's absolutely right that bracket creep is taking from the pockets of Australians. We've seen a 23% increase in personal income taxes being paid in the last two years since Labor's come to power. And that's been a very significant factor in uh, the, the collapse in disposable incomes, real disposable incomes of Australian households. And this is a remarkable collapse in their incomes, driven by a combination of higher interest rates, higher taxes, and of course, higher prices. 
Um, but the best way to beat bracket creep is to get inflation down. That's not the only way. Um, we, of course, with the stage three tax cuts, propose flattening the tax rates as a powerful way uh, to combat bracket creep. Uh, Labor's decided they don't like that. Um, uh, for the first time for decades, uh, they've created a new tax bracket um, and, and that's only gonna make bracket creep worse. Uh, Lucy's right, there's a lot of ways that you can uh, you, you can combat bracket creep, but the best way of all is to keep inflation down, Ross. And that has so many other byproducts benefits. Um, there, there is so much pain, pain being felt right across the board because of raging inflation, and we see now it's going up, not down. Do you sense that government, and maybe even the coalition could be guilty of this as well, sheets blame home, home to, say, supermarkets, for example, for rising prices, when in actual fact it's the rising tax take that is also taking a significant chunk out of Australian households' pockets? Well, I've been saying that for a long while. I've been saying there's three things that are really hurting Australian household budgets. <clears throat> number one is higher prices. Number two is higher interest rates. But number three, and this is a very big factor, is higher personal income taxes being, being, being paid. I mean, 23% in two years, a very small, or some proportion of that is, is population growth, but it's relatively small. The big chunk of it is each individual Australian household paying more personal income tax. And it is absolutely having a huge impact on Australian households. You'd think, by the way, given that, you'd be seeing uh, downward pressure on inflation. But when the government replaces household spending with its own spending, well, this is what you get. I mean, this is absolutely the wrong approach that Labor is taking. This was the wrong budget for the times. We've heard that from economist after economist. I know you've heard that uh, from many people uh, Ross, uh, and, uh, you know, this is truly the wrong budget for the times. OK, can I take you to migration? Because both parties are now committing to lower migration. Is not the better way, mm. along with lowering migration, to make certain that we actually get the right people with the right skills at the right time in this country so that we actually build a young and growing population base with skills that can add something to this country for, for generations into the future? You're absolutely right, Ross. You're absolutely right. So we know when a young person comes to Australia in their late 20s or early 30s, they've been trained, they're willing to work and get out there and have a go, and they're going to spend the next 35 years building their way into this great new country for them. They are enormous contributors. And shifting the balance towards those kind of skilled immigrants is hugely important. In fact, Peter Dutton laid that out in his budget and reply speech. One area in particular where, where Labor has pushed back against immigration is the construction trades, and yet we know we have serious shortages in what's needed to build more homes to deal with that huge problem we've got where young Australians can't get into a home. So you're absolutely right, the mix does matter, but the absolute level matters too. Um, and when you're getting to the point where in uh, two years you're getting close to a million new Australians, uh, as well as the natural uh, population growth, I mean, you just haven't got a housing supply sector that can come even close to keeping up with that. So we've got to get the balance right. We do have to make sure we're getting enough houses built. We've got the right skilled immigrants coming into the country for the skill gaps we've got, as you rightly say. But we also can't cope uh, with immigration rates like 530,000 in a year, which is what we've seen under Labor. It's just not something that... It's a number that's just too high, Ross. Before I let you go, I want to talk to you about one other issue, and that is a company called Northern Mining, controlled largely by Chinese interests, with the Foreign Investment Review Board now investigating um, just who owns those shares. Now, this week, I noticed that Nick Curtis, the chair who has been v vocal about the shareholding in that company, has been pushed out. This is a critical minerals miner that the, the government wants more of. Mm. Are you concerned that Chinese interests are using back doors to get access to Australian critical minerals? Well, we, we, we like foreign investment. It's important. It's been an important part of this country uh, for a long, long time, Ross. But it must be in the national interest. And if it's not in the national interest, the job of FERB is to say no. Uh, the job of the Treasurer and the government uh, on the back of FERB recommendations is to say no. Uh, now, I don't have all the details 
of this case. I only read what, what is publicly available, but this is exactly the kind of case where FERB should be really running the ruler over it and making sure the capital is in the national interest. And if it's not in the, in the critical minerals area, of course, uh, it's very sensitive. Uh, when it's not in the national interest, uh, it shouldn't proceed. It's as simple as that. Angus Taylor, always good to have you in the program. Many thanks for your time today. Good on you, Ross. Good to be with you.